How you doing, guys? Round 27 here of Draft Stars. And the picks here between the Broncos and the Storm. We're going to kick it off in the outside backs. And, and Pappy's back at fullback. And I don't know if you can select him at 18k. It's a fair bit of dosh to, to deal out there. Uh, so I think you need to be going for probably guys like Tristan Saylor. They're going to be a good one for you there. Jesse Arthurs comes in and is going to have a decent crack at this one. It's just going to be hard to see who is actually going to win this matchup, given both teams are, are going to be resting a lot of their players. So we you know guys like... Um, Corey Oates can, can do a great job, you know, regardless of, of how things are going with their side. But you know, it, it probably turns out to be guys like you know, Justin Olam, uh, Jordan Pereira is very much one of those guys that is a base stat monster. So I'd be looking at Jordan in that one, even though he's a little bit more expensive than guys like Saylor in that one there. Bronson Garlic should be able to play big minutes and do a good job. It's going to be hard to select between the halves of Jaden Nkarima and Wishart because I think they'll share the kick meters and then a lot of the general play. So Jock Madden is going to be the guy that sticks out there at halfback. For the forwards there, you're looking at Eli Katoa. Is he going to be able to perform at the heights that he has over the last few weeks without his uh, his superstar halves in in Hughes especially? I definitely think he can, but 21770 is very expensive. So guys like Brennan Picura are going to be the ones I'll be looking at in this one. And Keenan Palacia uh, for some big minutes in the 13 role will work out great, but it's also guys like Chris Lewis in that start. We know that he can usually score pretty well when he gets an opportunity. Just it's, They're very few and far between, especially for big minutes at that. But he, he may also be sharing some minutes with Jack Howarth um, in this one as well. So definitely something to look at. He could play between the left and the right there, um, that young man. So yeah, that's our first game there. Let me know your thoughts on that. It's a very hard one to, to go through just because we don't actually know what's going to happen given that there's a lot of restings in that one. Also backs for the Roosters and the South. So, Suili has been the one that's dominating it, and you can definitely look at selecting him there in that one. I doubt that Manu will play, and if he does, I don't think you'll have the, the vigor that you, you would expect of him in this one. So, Teddy and uh, and Suili, if you're looking at the, the fullback and sort of the wing slot there, he's going to be the best play there. And Blake Taff had a really, really good one last time he he um, he played, and, and uh, he's definitely one to select. And for some reason, he's at 9K after that massive effort. For the halves hookers, you want to be looking at a couple of guys here. Sam Walker, very, very dominant last time, obviously with the try and, and everything there. 54 and a half uh, at his uh, lower price last week. If you're looking at good options, I think that uh, that Ilias can come out and do fairly well. But Damien Cook, they do need to win, so I think he can come out and play well. And, you know, averaging 70 of his last three is, is uh, you know, nothing to sneeze at for sure. If you're looking at the forwards, we are going to have a little bit of value, but... Really, it's coming from these guys like Kame Sele. If he can get back to some full fitness, he was able to get sort of mid-40 scores for a bit there. So ten, just over 10K, he could be the one to look at there. Fletcher Baker, obviously there as well. Um, Terrell May has been the one that's been absolutely dominant scoring tries. So over the last three weeks, he's been had 54.3s, he's lowest. So definitely look at him as well. Um, and then yeah, you're looking at Butcher and, and Murray up top that are going to likely score the best in that one. For the Eagles and the Tigers there, what you're looking at is Tolu Kola, absolutely dominant last week, and he'll be able to do that again, I think. Tristan Riley being very, very good in the centers as well. He got a try as well um, as he did the week before there, 38 in this one. So that'll be the couple that I'd be looking at there in the outside backs. You then move, yeah, you, know, you got Jason Sabu, who, who went well also, and I think he can do the same. Getting more expensive, strangely enough. But Api Korosau, if you think the Tigers can hang in it, he's going to be the play um, up top. And then you've got three real different guys. You've got DCs who absolutely killed it last week. Get him in your side, no matter what. And then you can make a decision. Do you want to get another guy in the flex in Coruscant? Or do you want to go for Simkin, who's going to be the cheap guys to score well also? For the forwards, Sipley, really, really good the last three weeks. 69 is his average. You're looking at Sean Bloor as a must-have, I think, in my opinion, at 13.7, given he's starting this week, and he'll get big minutes. And if Matamua actually does start in the 13, then he's going to do solid as well. Dolphins and Warriors, what you're looking at here is very limited changes for the Dolphins, plenty for the Warriors there. So Tain Torpigi is going to be the play in that one for sure. And then if you're looking at the Dolphins, it's going to be between Aiken, really, really dominant last week, and then Jermaine Asako as well. So look at those couple, um, definitely, definitely solid plays in that one there. Harrison Graham scored really well last week. He could definitely do it again. But I think he can get a bit more value out of Freddie Lussick in this one. And then Sean O'Sullivan up top. You've got Volkman and Tamati Martin who are going to cha uh, share the, the kicking duties and the playmaking duties there. 
For the forwards, again, not much changes for the Dolphins there. And you're looking at someone like Connolly Lemuelu, very, very expensive now, 17-4. I think he can do a great job, but it's probably not worth there. And you can go a little bit cheaper with guys like Josh Curran, who played big minutes last week at the full 80. And uh, yeah, he's, he's the value at this point. No one really else is scoring well enough to even uh, warrant their selection. So you might have to go Curran and then go right up top there in that one. Broncos Storm come up next. And uh, Broncos are... Sorry. Yeah, Broncos are Storm. Broncos there... Sorry, we already did that one. Scratch that. We got Cowboys and Panthers. So it looked a bit strange. But uh, Trinkwater there is, is uh, you know, massive last week, and I think he can definitely look at doing something similar. It is against the Panthers, though, and they'll want to win to make sure they get the minor premiership if you know, if the Broncos lose this one. It's going to be the big the big thing there. So with them there, it's, it's Brian To'o. Can he do really well with their full complement of, of players? It didn't happen last week, but every other week he did, so... Definitely look at that uh, in that one there. Tyron Peachy, when they got their full squad, he seems to score really, really well. So look at him as well. I wouldn't be touching any other Cowboys in this one. You're looking at the Nathan Cleary show very clearly in this one. No one else I'd be looking at um, at playing, especially in this matchup. So just get Cleary and move on. And then you're probably going to have to save a little bit of cash. And that's probably going to have to come from Helam Lukey who continues to score well when he gets the big minutes. That's going to be the play in the forwards there. Okay, now we move to the Dragons and the Knights. And for the outside backs, we're missing out on Gags and Ponga this week. Not exactly sure how they'll go without their you know, couple of strike players. And, and you know, is Dom Young going to get the great ball that he had been? Lockie Miller really stands out now. Welcome back to him as the play. So Greg could definitely do it, but he is missing Ponga. So I think it's going to be on, on Lockie Miller to get a lot of the base stats and do well that way, and then stick with uh, Zach Lomax from there. Moving on to the halves hookers, and Adam Clune was incredible last week, scored amazingly well at the 63.6, so look at grabbing him again, and Far Manu Brown, he's going to do incredibly well at the 9. I don't think there's any point going up from there. Um, Brown is a big base stat getter, and could definitely score tries as well. Jack DeBellin comes back. He should be the best scorer in this lineup. Blake Laurie as well, uh, getting big minutes. I'm, I'm sure that will drop down a little bit with DeBellin returning, but not sure if JDB will actually play the full 80 in this one. But it was the Dylan Lucas show last week, and it is the Dylan Lucas show again at 14,500. So lock him in your side in this one. We then head to Titans and the Bulldogs. So for this one here, you've got... Brian Kelly, who is probably the best scorer of the lot. Not so exciting is all the other guys. Blake Wilson, a big one last week at 70. So he's the boom or bust guy in this list. And that's as far as I'd be looking, I'd say, in this one. Brimson, Kelly, um, Avery Lowe is going to be up and down as well. Yeah, he's been, he got an eight in there, a couple of 40 odds. So yeah, a mixture between those four works well. Moving to the next section, you've got Tommy Weaver, a much better performance than last week. So only a little bit better performance last week. He didn't have as many kick meters, I should say. Uh, but defensively, he was much better, which is obviously going to help. But um, yeah, I think I think he's going to perform solidly again. He's very, very cheap. So lock, lock him in. And then to the forwards, Tino is your man. I'd have, I would have him over for feeder in this one. Maxi King should be able to get some bigger minutes. Corey Waddell will get big minutes as well. So there's a lot of guys here that you should be looking at. But mainly through that top half. And on to the last one here. Sharky's up against the Raiders, and both teams are very much full strength. So when you're looking at that, then I think you know Connor Tracy is the clear top bet in this one. In the halves, you're looking at Nico Hines, obviously, coming off a really, really big score, 94.7. He's going to be the clear top guy. Braden Trindle and Braley could be other good options there as well. And uh, that would be all in that one. Moving to the forwards, Cam McInnes is massive. In the last one then, you've got Toby Rudolph performing really, really well, and Wade Graham is another guy to do great also. I wish you all the best of luck for this last round of Draft Stars here in round 27 before we get to finals. See you guys.